Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Block's Media Arts Tutorials. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create low poly illustrations. First we'll talk about what is low poly, what do we mean by that. Next we're going to take a look at what you need to know before even starting your design, some of the basics. Then we're going to have a look at what how to segment your image, meaning separate it up into areas that you can fill with your polygons. And then we'll look at some low poly rules of thumb. And finally, we'll have a look at how to color in all of your polygons. So let's get into it. So let's begin by answering the question, what is low poly? What are we talking about here? So the word poly refers to polygons, which in this case would be um, shapes that are three or more sides. And generally speaking, I like to keep them to three sides. So we're talking about triangles, okay? And this is essentially what low and high poly is. Uh, it refers to, uh, in the, the gaming industry, in the, the video game industry, there are a lot of, there's a lot of call for high poly graphics, which when you have smaller polygons, that create the graphics that you're watching on screen, you can get a more lifelike feel, a more uh, more fluid sort of uh, graphic look, um, and more organic, I should say, uh, a, a graphic look. The low poly, of course, is where you have higher uh, or larger polygons to fit in the same amount of the same space. And so this is a great illustration right here of what high poly, mid poly, and low poly is okay so that's what we're talking about when we when we're using uh making a low poly illustration we're going to be creating a essentially something that looks very gem like it's got a like a uh, i don't know not stone but a, a faceted sort of a, a a texture to it or a look to it all right so that's what we'll be doing today we will be working on an apple okay i thought we would make a uh, low poly apple and so i want to talk about the basics that you need to understand uh when doing a low poly illustration okay so we we are going to be using the pen tool for sure now you will be needing to create a stroke but not a fill so what i would do is click on the default fill and stroke to get yourself a black stroke and then click on the none button to turn off your fill so that way you will only be drawing with a stroke. Essentially, what we need to know is, aside from that, is we will not be drawing with curves. Okay, this, uh, for low poly to work, it has to be straight lines and solid corners. Oops, see, I missed there. Let's undo that. Bam, right there. Okay, so, and then one other thing to think about is that you need to lock your image before doing your work. So this is really important. Go over to your layers panel, lock the image so that you don't have any mistakes. So it doesn't actually move on you or shift around, okay? Now for the low poly project, a lot of designers like to simply double click on the blank part of your layer and then hit template. And what that does is it locks it, but it also dims your main image. That way when you draw your lines, You'll be able to see the dark lines over any other, uh, you know, any dark areas. Okay, so that's actually what I recommend we do. Okay, you'll double click on the layer in a blank area of the layer, and then you'll set it to template, and that locks and dims your layer. Okay, so next, what we need to do is we'll create one new layer above layer one, which is our apple. Next, we'll just go ahead and grab our path, our pen tool, excuse me, and you can press. P on your keyboard to do that simply and easily. So before I get into actually putting the path down on the uh, on the apple, what we need to do is think about how we're going to break this up because you're not going to just be creating, you know, um, triangles all across the whole th apple and you know like that. You're not going to do that. You will actually be segmenting the apple into different areas so that you can make the the, the fill um, a, a little bit easier and it'll look a little bit more uh, realistic or more like your your apple. Okay, so the way that we do this is the very first thing we do is the silhouette of the object or whatever it is you're you're working on. And then we'll go to the inside and create and fill in the inner 
details. And then after that, we'll go through and fill in the, or outline, I should say, the shades and values that are on the, um, the image. Okay, so let's start with the first one, which is outlining the silhouette. And the way that I like to do this is we'll simply create anchors, simple clicks, that are so, you know, fairly far apart. Now, you don't have to go that far. Let's actually bring it back a little bit. I'm going to go a little shorter. So just about like this is good. If you make them too close, there's a reason that you don't want to make your lines and your bring your anchors too close to each other because we are going to be, let me disconnect here, you're going to be finding the anchors and creating your polygons based on those anchors. Now, if they're too close, let's say we have anchors that are this close like this okay then you're going to start to you're going to have to create smaller polygons to connect those and you'll end up making essentially a high polygon image with really really small polygons that's not what we want okay so let's start fresh here we want you know fairly mid to large size polygons so here we go it's about like that side decided to go about I'm splitting the distance between what I originally had done the longer ones and the shorter ones that I showed you earlier so now it doesn't have to be perfect you don't like here I missed it I missed over here it doesn't really matter the the viewing audience will not see your original image so they're just gonna see whatever it is that you produce all right we want to try to just keep a consistent sort of a straight line all the way across, okay? From anchor to anchor. And end it there. So there's the, the silhouette is done. And you can see, first of all, you can see all of the anchors are showing. That means that your path has is still selected, right? It's still selected. So now if I went in to do the details, which is the next step, we want to finish the inside details. With your path still selected, notice what happens to the anchor. Do you see the little minus that popped up under your, uh, your cursor? Or my cursor, I should say. When, if I were to click on that anchor, that would delete that anchor. That's not what we want. So there are two things that I want you to keep in mind about adding anchors. If you're adding it to an, uh, a line that's already been selected like this, you absolutely can put an anchor down. You press the shift key and hold it. Come over on top of that anchor and click. Now I'm, I'm drawing the next one. So that'll work just fine. It'll put an anchor directly on top of another anchor if it's selected, but you have to hold the shift key. Otherwise it'll delete. Okay. Another option would be what I like to do is after I draw a path, press control or command, press that key and simply click off into the, the other areas, any, any area that's, that doesn't have ink or a stroke. Okay. That'll deselect it. Then you can go ahead and hover over the anchor and begin again. Okay. So let's go through and finish up the details here. Now I missed that one. So control Z will back you up undo it doesn't have to be perfect as I said but you know you want to try to be close now here well like I said you could do two things you can either hit the escape key to let go of the last path or press control and click control or command now I'm gonna start here and come down I could easily end it here I'm gonna actually bring it right to there now here's a situation where I've got a straight line Actually, no, here's okay. Now, I forgot that I added that anchor. I'm going to actually just push this up. I don't want it to be on a straight line like this. I'd like to just give it a little bend. That way, if I press control and then click to let go of that line, I can start a fresh line here to follow this line right here. So just go bing to there. Come over, press control or command and click to let go of it. And there we go. Now, for this one, I'm just going to kind of go right up the side just there uh, I don't see any more on the other side so I'm gonna leave that 
The very next step is to look for the values and the shades. So we've got some values and shading here. So we've got like uh, some shading down at the bottom and we've got some lighter values and darker values over here. So let's start with just simple clicks. We're going to surround this area. But there you go. So now we've segmented out the various color, you know, color areas and shades and values. The next step is to put in the polygons. OK, the very uh, the, the, the important thing to remember, there are some rules of thumb. OK, you're going to be drawing anchors or creating anchors on top of anchors. You will not be making anchors to solid lines or paths. Um, and also, uh, every polygon in the very end, we're going to be creating basically triangles all over the place. So the polygons should be three sided. So we have one here that's one, two, three, four, five, six sides uh, right out here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. And so these are going to have to be broken down into smaller areas. And I can that's actually this is a great opportunity for me to show you how to do that. So let's just put an anchor on top of an, of an anchor here. And we'll basically just figure out where you want. You can go to any of, well, not these, but you can go to these. And I'm just going to break it here and then here. And I, you know, naturally could go here, but I'm actually going to click and choose to go here just because I want to. Now for this one, uh, we'll go like this and I'll actually go to that. So this is really important. What you should remember not to do is do not ever go across other paths. Don't let your path cross over other paths like this. This is not what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, what you want to have happen is uh, you go to this one and then you let go of it and then you can split it this way or go the other direction. All right. So now let's continue. One thing that I like to do and I'd like you to do from now on is remember to have your hand, your left hand on your keyboard uh, you, with your pinky at the control or command simply or one of your fingers <laughs> down there. Press the control and press Y. This flips to your outlines so that you are not looking at colors at all. But what you do see is whether or not your lines are connected and you can zoom right in. You see, I'm at 8,500% there. Uh, and you can see whether or not you've got anchors going to anchors. Now, if you had done it wrong, you would see right away. You might see like this where you have, you know, this is, it's just slightly off or maybe you didn't connect it properly. It's like, like that, uh, but you can't tell uh, when, if you're looking at it from here, it looks like you made it right. Control command Y brings you back to your outlines. You need to zoom in and grab your white arrow, grab this anchor and make sure that all anchors are connected or on top of, or not necessarily connected to, but are on top of other anchors. That's highly important for this process to look correct.
Okay. I believe it's ready now to uh, to do color. What I what I like to do is uh, turn off the dim feature. Keep it locked and keep it as a template. Select all of your lines. So if your uh, your object layer, your image layer is locked, you should not have any problem with this. Just grabbing the lines alone. And what I'd like you to do is go to Object, Live Paint, Make. All right, you can tell you're in a live paint area because the, the corner nodes have gotten larger. These boxes are larger now. And if you press K on your keyboard, you can see that the areas are all highlighting, which is exactly what we need. So I'm going to zoom in, press the Alt key or Opt, and you'll get the eyedropper. Hold that in and then simply click with your mouse right in the very the very center of one of the polygons and then let go of the keyboard and click again you'll drop that color right in that area and that's the whole process essentially that's basically what we're going to do so let's go around now i took the color out of this one this has got a, you know a bunch of different colors in there and i'm going to choose one of the darker colors because it's going into the shaded area here so press alt or opt click on the dark area and then let go of the keyboard and click same thing over here. You can select the colors that you want to choose. You, you don't have to just pick whatever you, you know, randomly end up on. You can actually go over to the darker areas or the mid tones or get, if you wanted, this really light color. I'm going to undo that because I don't like that. But Now, this is an opportunity to find out wh how we're doing. You can easily turn off the uh, image layer by clicking on the visibility and it turns it on and off and you can see how far you've come. All right, so let's just go through the whole thing, continue. Okay, there we go. Now, the very last step, if we let go of it, you deselect it, it's got all of the, the lines still, uh, all of your strokes. Select the whole thing again, go over and select the toggle, the, uh, the stroke selector over here, and click on the none button, and then deselect, and there you are. Okay, that's essentially all there is to it. That's your low poly illustration. All right. If you have trouble with this, please feel free to email me. I am happy to help in any way that I can. Hope you had fun with this. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.